Oh, hey guys, and welcome to Everybody's It, where we love God, we love camp, and we love the other segments on this show. Guys, we are so excited to be here doing episode two with you guys, and it's going to be a good time. So one thing we realized in doing episode one is that we jumped right in and never told you who we were. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that now. So if you listen to the last one and you're like, who are these guys? The wait is over because we're going to tell you. Yeah, so uh, we're going to tell you here and then you go back and listen to the first episode and then you'll you'll have the context. It'll make more sense. It's kind of like when the when the sequel to something comes out and then it like helps explain the first one. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what we're doing. But we're just telling you our names. Um, anyway, uh, I'm JJ and I am the program assistant here at Retreat Center. Oh, I'm Dylan and I do... A couple things here, I guess. I work in accounting. I'm going to be program manager at Wilderness Camp this summer. I teach some outdoor ed classes. I don't know. They're, I don't have a specific job. I just vibe. Okay. <laughs> vibe specialist. Uh, oh, I'm Jeff. Hello. This is what my voice sounds like. And um, what are we supposed to say next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I work here. <laughs> and... I do a lot of media uh, marketing related things. So I uh, do the YouTube videos that go up and I don't know this podcast. I didn't clarify, but I also work here. I <laughs> I don't know if that's assumed or we not. We just found him. Uh, <laughs> like, hey, you want to do a podcast? I love podcasts. So of course I said yes. Yeah. You um, just have that loving podcast yeah. like look. I mean, look. <laughs> You can't, they can't see you. Vibe. (laughs) That loving podcast voice, obviously. Yeah, of course. Uh, Dylan kind of talked about, he was like, yeah, I do a lot of different things. And honestly, we all kind of do a lot of different things. Um, Mm. We're here as part of uh, what we're calling the Agape program this year. And so we're all helping out camp in a lot of different ways. We're not interns. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah, we're kind of... I cross departmental employees. Mm -hmm. That's the technical term. Yeah. So whether, um, like, like we were talking about, like whether I'm doing accounting or outdoor ed or whatever, like whatever needs to get done basically is what we do. And we do it with a smile because we like working. (laughs) All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be doing some camp updates. We're going to be talking about uh, 3CA. We're going to be talking about Ignite. And then we have another super important uh, announcement uh, to an update to tell you about. And then we're going to be going in talking a little bit more about the Bible. Uh, we're in Exodus right now. So we're going to be chatting a little bit about some stuff that we've been reading from there. And then we are going to go into another random hypothetical. It's going to look a little similar to our last episode. Uh, we might be changing that up in the future, but for now, it's going to be a l- pretty consistent. Oh, it's going to be a good time. Can we jump right into the important announcement? Because oh. I can't wait any longer. Oh, I longer. think so. Oh, it's, yeah. Is it the one that I think it is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Guys, Dylan got a new microphone, and it's this is just huge news. Can we just... I mean, last time, we, we were snapping in case you, like, yeah, yeah. you can't see it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, last time... Like, JJ and I have the same microphone, the Shure SM58. We are not sponsored by Shure. Um, Are you sure? (laughs) Nice. No. (laughs) We're not sponsored by them. Oh, all right. Fair enough. I'm positive. (laughs) Anyway, Dylan has a new mic. Yeah, it wasn't, like, a bad mic, but it, 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 it it was just different. It wasn't a good mic, though. It was like a, a middle of the road. I was gonna say, mm-hmm. I think Dylan started out like sitting straight up, but his mic was slowly like going down the whole episode, and so he slowly like like slid more and more into the seat until he was like completely flat in the seat. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that does, that's more of a, a mic stand issue. I was having some mic stand issues, different mic, and I, you guys couldn't tell this, but the headphones I was wearing like only worked sometimes. <laughs> So I had a rough go of it in the first episode, Guys, but I'm feeling good right now. We invested now. in some new technology. It's like a little amp that you have for your headphones and th- like you plug the, the all the headphones into it and you can individually like adjust the mic or the headphone level of each headphone. It's really exciting. I love technology. So I, I didn't even know something like that existed. Honestly, Jeff's the one who knows how all these things connect to each other and whatnot. So it's really interesting when we're trying to set up for this and we're just putting things places and hoping they hoping they work. 
You just and plug stuff in. If it fits, great. Yeah. If it doesn't, make it fit. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't, you just, you know, you kind of shave a little bit off until it does fit. But Jeff said yeah. we shouldn't do that. Don't so. do that. Don't take <laughs> our there. <laughs> it's AV advice. If you're trying to start a podcast, then don't start a podcast and just come on this podcast instead. Mm. Uh, so the next thing that we want to share a little bit about is the ignites that we're doing, which are the the winter retreats out at Wilderness Camp. Uh, we had another one of those this weekend. Uh, there's a lot more snow now, which is awesome. Uh, we've been getting to use the pond and the tubing hill, uh, and so that's been great so far. Dylan was out there the the whole time. He was out there a little bit more than I was. Yeah, you mentioned the pond and. This is the first weekend that people were able to ice skate. So we were out there like clearing some snow off the pond because like you said, we did get some snow. And I thought we were going to lose Josh <laughs> because we were shoveling off the pond. And right as we were walking off, he like he let his guard down just for a second right mm. before we got off. Mm. And it looked like movie scene like feet <laughs> out from under him shovel goes flying and like luckily he didn't hit his head or anything mm. um but he like landed pretty hard on his back and me and a couple other guys were out there and we were like oh my gosh like but he got right back up he took it like a champ so mm. yay josh yes you, the reason i was laughing at that was because i know he's okay I would not <laughs> yeah, laugh yeah, yeah. Also, not okay. if you like you know cracked his head open we probably wouldn't be sharing this story all right, another moment, right but, yeah, yeah josh is fine yeah also if you don't know who josh is because we just said a guy's name. Uh, Josh, he's the director at our wilderness camp, which is where we've all worked for a lot of summers. Um, so we're going to try and do better at telling you who people are when we say their names. Uh, so you're not trying to like you know keep track of all these people without uh, as much context. This is so. JJ passively, aggressively telling us like, hey, <laughs> you need to do better. <laughs> no, but yeah. Uh, maybe Josh will be a special guest at some point in the future. He might be. Yeah. Uh, if if you have anyone that you know of that you want to be a special guest, let us know. Yeah. Um, yes. Another thing, probably our most big significant thing from the past couple weeks is the the 3CA or CCCA conference that we went to last week, whichever way you want to call it. Um, but it's 3CA. Yeah. It's way catchier. What does that stand for? I was for those who don't I was know. just thinking about it and I was like, oh my gosh, I better get this right. This Christian a, Camping Conference Association. Is that right? Is that the right order of C's? I think those I'm pretty so. sure. Those is it right Christian words. Camping and Conference Association? Yup. Unless it isn't. But anyway. <laughs> it's one of those. Um we are not sponsored by three <laughs> CA. Um so we went down to three CA at Harvey Cedars, which is also not a sponsor of ours. And that was a lot of fun. It was it was really cool. We got to meet people from a lot of other camps. Uh, one of my friends from college actually works at Hebron, so I got to see him there. Uh, and yeah, I got to learn a lot and see meet a lot of people. Uh, what were what were some of the things you guys that were most significant about three CA for you guys? I think first, a beautiful camp. Mm -hmm. Like Harvey Cedars is right. It's in New Jersey, and it's between, like, the bay and the ocean, and, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. They have a great facility there. Um, a lot of great breakout sessions, um, stuff about servant leadership and what it means to be a leader and, um, yeah, how to build a culture and a, a ton of good, ton of good material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... Some of the sessions I went to were a little bit more focused on like marketing and things like that. Um, but yeah, definitely really cool to see all the different people there. Um, and especially like meeting people like that part of it was so interesting to me because sometimes I think about like um, the stuff I do here with with media and marketing and social media video. And I think that like all the problems I experience with those things are like unique to me. Mm. But then you meet other people from other camps who do the same thing just at a different camp and they have the same problems that you have and you can kind of like relate to them in, in a lot of different ways the same problems and the same like passions like the mm -hmm. same things they enjoy about it um and it's just cool sharing in that with other people and also realizing that we all have the same exact mission which is uh spruce lake calls it to point people toward christ and that that is it's really cool to see how other camps are doing that as well and how they implement different things. Um, so a lot of, in short, a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. Um, and it's really cool to be able to see that uh, 
And that was one huge takeaway I had from 3CA. So it was, it was cool. Yeah, I think something something that was great was there there are a lot of camps that have either it's like gap year programs or intern programs or something like that and there were a lot of people there that were like our age like early 20s um and it was awesome to see other people that i that we don't get to see every day that are our age that love camping have great ideas are young and energetic and yeah it was it was awesome to get to meet some of them and talk to them about their experience too it was funny like we met uh, a couple people from rock mountain and this past summer they had run a uh, laser tag for us as a staff one summer and i met one of the guys who was there who brought that to spruce lake and it was really funny to make that connection because like you know obviously i didn't know him at that time um yeah and it's it's funny to compare notes to other camps as well like there's things that i was like you know growing up was like spruce lake is so unique because we do this and then like finding out oh a lot of camps do that which is cool <laughs> but yeah so it's, it's interesting like mo most of my camp experience is only at spruce lake so i yeah getting more of an understanding of what is what's normal what's common what have other camps done as well but spruce lake is still really unique and cool and you should come here <laughs> oh yeah absolutely not not taking anything away from i mean we're here so like how much more unique does it get than that exactly yeah. no other camp has us so yeah I, <laughs> yeah well, uh, so oh go ahead were you about to move on no i was just about to say word on the street is that not everyone had the same experience that we did hint hint johnny <laughs> <laughs> oh would you like to share more about that um well i wasn't there for this i've just heard it told secondhand so i'm gonna turn it over to jay yeah. yeah okay yeah for it either. i yeah. see where you're going okay so you know one of the things as we were heading there so johnny and johnny is the uh the director of adult and family ministries at retreat center and he's kind of like for me, he's my direct boss. Um, but so he was there with us at 3CA and he is, you know, obviously it's a, we're a camp. We're always trying to find summer staff. We're always looking to recruit people. And Johnny is one of the most gung ho people about, you know, trying to recruit people at all times. And I remember we were telling him in the van right there, Johnny, these people already work at camps. You cannot recruit them because they already <laughs> work at another camp. Um, he didn't like that, but so <laughs> didn't we're, stop him. We were sitting in, I was sitting in a session with Johnny and the speaker who was there, he was talking about his family and he was talking about his kids. And he said, one of my kids is 15. Another one of my kids is 18. And Johnny immediately turns to me and goes, do you think we could get them to work at camp this summer? <laughs> and I turned back to Johnny and it was like, is that all you ever, is that all you're ever focusing on? And he laughed and, you know, we had had that quick conversation. And in that moment, the speaker had turned to talk about something really serious and he heard Johnny laugh. And so <laughs> we, I don't even, I didn't know this, but someone told Johnny after that the speaker looked at him and was like, dude, and like <laughs> he didn't realize, neither of us realized that that had happened in that moment. Um, so yeah, if you ever, if you ever come to Spruce Lake and you have a quick conversation with someone and they're trying to recruit you, you should ask if their name is Johnny. <laughs> um, uh, important part of the story that Johnny would be upset at us if we didn't mention it. Like afterwards he did have lunch with oh, the speaker yes. and yeah. he talked to them. So he, he knows that they're cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, uh, it is, we still like to to get on johnny's case about that just yeah because we thought it was funny dude dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah good good times at 3ca yeah. good times yeah yeah shall we shall we move on past announcements i think we've covered pretty yeah. much everything yep. yeah i think so all right so yeah we're gonna be moving into uh talking a little bit about uh, the Bible again. And like we talked about last time, we've been kind of going through reading the Bible in order, but also like we're doing a book from the Old Testament, the same time as New Testament, and then Psalms and Proverbs together as well. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to bring something up that I thought was interesting from Exodus as I was reading. So mm -hmm. we're at the part in Exodus where uh, we just got through the, the plagues and Moses is leading the people out of Egypt. And right before Moses goes back to Egypt, he, you know, God is telling him, Hey, like, I'm going to have you do this and go free my people. And something 
that I noticed was just how many times Moses is like, uh, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. And so in Exodus four, three times, uh, Moses says that basically he's trying to, he's trying to get out of it. Um, and so in, in Exodus four, one, he, Moses says, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you. And then again, in Exodus 10, he says, Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. And then once again, in verse 13, this time Moses is just straight up. He says, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Okay. If, if I could just call like, yeah. legit excuses too. Like if I were in this scenario, I would mm-hmm. probably think the same excuses that Moses thought. Like, you know, I go and tell someone that like the Lord appeared to me and they're just like, no, he didn't. I'm like, shh. <laughs> Dude, man, you, he, they're not right. But like, you know, what do you do in that? Like, that's, I would be having those worries mm-hmm. too. And then like, oh, I'm not good at speaking. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what, what am I supposed to like completely like understandable that Moses would think these things. And then you, like he said on the third one, he's just like, I, I don't want to do it, dude. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So if you, you can carry on. Yeah. Just good. I mean, an observation I had. But. Yeah. That's pretty much all I had from reading. And that's some of my thoughts were that, um, it's one, maybe he, he's afraid to do it and maybe he's trying to get out of it, but it sounds like he's trying to get out of it because he's scared or he's not confident in it. And, you know, God ends up sending Aaron with him, which is cool because God's still having him do it, but providing him the support that, that he feels that he needs. Um, yeah. And so I don't know. What did you guys think about that? Yeah, I th- I think it's interesting. I feel like almost everybody has heard the saying, God doesn't, here, I got to get it right, so I have to think about it. (laughs) God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Mm -hmm. And that is something that, like, I've felt true in my life also. Um, Think about it. We've all worked at camp. And I was a counselor in 2018 and 2019 at Wilderness Camp. And there were weeks where I felt like I was the worst counselor in the world. Mm. Like, I think of one week specifically that two of my campers end up going off site to a doctor because of injuries. Or um, the same week I had a camper who was homesick all week and I felt like I couldn't be there for him like I needed to be. And it, all of that stuff started to pile up. And then, yeah, and I then I... I felt just like bad about myself and like, God, why, why am I here? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't, I can't continue to do this and to minister like you want me to. And, um, I think something that a lot of people who have been here before, um, can relate to. So we do this thing on Wednesday night called invitations, um, where the pastor gives like a clear gospel presentation on, uh, Wednesday night, and then all the counselors go up, and the their campers have a chance to come up and like talk to them about what they heard, um, if they want to accept Christ, or maybe they just have something they want to talk about. And um, I had a lot of campers come up that night and had like like really good conversations that I wasn't expecting to have because of how I was feeling about uh, myself and the job I was doing. Um, but yeah, it was just it's just interesting to see that people as much as times have changed people have kind of stayed the same mm-hmm. in that they don't always feel like they can do what god wants them to do and honestly like they're a little bit right that they can't do it by themselves but when yeah when you have god on your side working in you and through you it like completely changes the way you view the work you do i think mm-hmm. yeah, i think um with what you were saying about like You know, people are, a lot of the issues we have in a way are the same to challenges that people had a long time ago as well. And, you know, God had Moses do something that Moses didn't in himself believe he could do. And I think a lot of times, even for us, like, well, yeah, obviously for us too, like there might be things that I can do well that I don't see that I can do well or things that I will be able to succeed in that others see in me that I don't necessarily see. Um, one thought I had was when I was a counselor, it was back. This was, this was back in 2015. So I think this was actually my first week 
ever counseling by myself here at Spruce Lake as well. But I had um, I had a camper one week who uh, was, we had some some challenges with him in the tent. Uh, the tent dynamics were were challenging and. Uh, there's a lot of times where I felt with this one camper that I kept having to tell him like, Hey, like you need to like that behavior is not okay. Um, and giving him a lot of consequences throughout the week. And, you know, at the end of the week, uh, I, you know, was like, you know, I hope, I hope he liked camp, but I wouldn't be shocked if he didn't because I felt like I was on him a lot that week. And, uh, sometimes like we'll get, uh, reviews like parents will write reviews of that their kids share about the camp experience and whatnot and so our office assistant came up to me uh a couple weeks later and said hey that camper wrote a review for you and my initial thought was oh no and then (laughs) she was like oh no he loved you and i was like oh okay that's great i'm glad so yeah (laughs) (laughs) so just kidding yeah that was awesome that even though the things i was worried about of like that I kept having to like, you know, correct his behavior and be on him about things were like, that's not what he focused on during the week. And he remembered all the fun things and the good things that, that happened. And I thought that was really cool of like, you know, I didn't see my success in that, but from an outside source, I was able, someone was able to show me that. Yeah. Similar like thing for me doing video, like in Mm -hmm. 2018 was the first summer I did video and I like didn't really have much of a clue of of what I was doing that much um and so it was the first the first week of camp um and just to for for a frame of reference we do camp well like overnight camp wilderness camp from Sunday to Friday so the kids come on Sunday and they leave on Friday so when you do a video for that you have the video footage from Sunday through most of Thursday and then you're working on the video throughout the week and then you finish the video and it plays on Friday and the, the literal first week I was doing video, I, I was taking footage, getting everything in there. And um, Wednesday, as I was formulating everything, Wednesday night, I was I was making the um, the DVD menu and programming all the buttons and stuff because we used to do DVDs uh, back in like the olden days of 2018. The ancient times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we uh, it took a pandemic to make us stop doing DVDs, <laughs> but because uh, we stopped them in 2020. But anyway, um, I was I was working on the DVD in the in the software that we were using for that, and I accidentally saved the file over top of the folder that all the footage was in from Monday through Wednesday, and so it was like it, and it just like it didn't even. Sometimes you delete things and you can recover them at like. It was just gone. (laughs) I couldn't, I like downloaded some like tools that like help you recover deleted files. It was gone. Um, And I like did that and I, at at first when I deleted the files and realized what I had done. Also like, I feel stupid for doing that still, but like the way the, the way the software worded the, hey, we're gonna delete everything that in this folder message, it was worded like so like cryptically and like weird that I just like didn't understand it. And sometimes you like a pop up will happen and then you'll just like hit the button on it. You're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> that was not the button. <laughs> That's not a okay, whatever pop up. That was we're literally deleting everything you've worked Monday Sunday to So anyway. Why didn't it just say that? <laughs> yeah. So I like I clicked the button, I realized what I had done, and I just like stared at the computer for like three minutes, like did that is this real like um and so like i didn't do any work the rest of the night i was like man what are we gonna do like we're we're like we can't have a video this week we can't do anything and so i talked to joel who was um who's our facilities director over the summer uh super cool guy um and he's like really calm he has like the the chillest demeanor ever of like like most people here and so i told him what had happened and i was like what do we do do we like cancel the video and he was just like well that's bad but uh i guess you'll just have to get what you can get and then make the video for friday that was not the answer i wanted but i was like that was the answer i was afraid he was gonna say so i was like how are we gonna do this so i'm panicking all of thursday trying to get this video going and then the video plays on Friday and I'm beating myself up over about it. I'm like, man, like this video could have been so much better. And then like 
of course it plays the kids watch it and they're like yo that was so much fun i love it and i'm like <laughs> i really let myself freak out wednesday and th- like i'm still upset that it happened but which by the way it never happened again so i did learn my from my mistakes um always read the pop-ups <laughs> yeah always read your pop-ups <laughs> um yeah so uh, yeah i mean the kids the kids like still got enjoyment out of the video and like i like maybe i could have been a little it was okay for me to be a little bit of upset about it because you know it was still something that i shouldn't have done that like was really silly and i wanted to learn from my mistakes there but at the same time like i beat myself up so hard over it but like knowing that like god can still use the video to help kids like have good memories of camp and and you know take that home with them and they can watch it over and over again so like that's it's really relieving to know like even if i feel like i haven't done the best job in the similar ways like you guys were telling with your stories like god can still use that um to work in people's lives uh even if it's just like a a short little like 10 minute video um and you can go watch that on our youtube (laughs) channel spruce lake wilderness camp (laughs) (laughs) subscribe (laughs) got a plug yeah oh of course yeah 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 um i think all all those things, you know, just shows like the relevance of the Bible for us today. Like in the story of Moses, he, he doesn't want to lead. And then God calls him to lead and he ends up, you know, freeing everyone who's enslaved in Egypt. And that, you know, God called him to do that and he succeeded. And so like, as long as that's our, as long as our focus is doing it, with God's help and through him, then we like, he's going to be with us in the midst of that. Even if, even if success doesn't look how I'm not saying you're going to succeed at everything you do, but even if our success might not look how we expect it to, or how we want it to, um, God's still going to be with us through that and provide for us in the midst of it. Yeah. And God has a plan. And even if like our, like our plan might be different from God's, but he, his plan like we're not strong enough to stop God's plan. So, um, we'll just, we just trust in him and he, he will orchestrate and, and watch over us. And he, he, he's God. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the moral of the story. I mean, we're just called to do our part. We can't control what other people do and God always does his part. So mm-hmm. when, yeah, when you feel called to something like, you just do your part and let God worry about the rest. Mm-hmm. Let yeah. him do the God thing. You just do the youth thing. Yeah. A lot, a lot less pressure. On <laughs> oh yeah. God, God is good. Um, yeah. Good, good stuff. Yeah. You're, are we, are we getting to the cup now? I think we're ready to get to the cup. All right. I don't know how to transition out of this, but, uh, I, I'm so excited for, for this hypothetical. Dirt. Um, I got the cup here with all the same green cup as last time. Uh, if you guys, if you uh, have your, uh, if you plan ahead and have your green cup at home, you can, this is the part you can go ahead and shake it up. Yep. Yeah, you can listen. Yeah, there it is. All right. So who's pulling, Dylan? Dylan. I'll pull this. All right. This time. Who pulled right. last time? Did I pull last time? Yes. Yes. Okay. You do have. Oh right, because I pulled name. one that I put in there. Yeah, yeah. I remember. All right. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. All right. What are we working with today? What would be the most exciting or interesting thing to make a floor in a house out of? Hmm. Okay. So, hmm. so some, some thoughts about this. I'm trying to decide what I want to make my floor out of. Like, hmm. I feel like there's the question of, like, what's important to me? Do I want it to be, like, sturdy? Do I want it to be, like, I don't know, feel fun when I walk on it? Do I want it to be, like... I don't know, something that tastes good. I feel like I might not want that for the floor. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But maybe maybe there's a room in in my house that if I was doing this and I wanted something that tastes good, it's a room that, you know, you don't we don't actually walk in that room. That room is just for eating the floor. Oh, do you (laughs) (laughs) the the eating the floor room? Do you does do you get to do a different substance for each room? Or is it like the whole floor? How's it worded? I think we limit it to one because one it says thing. thing. For the house. What would be the most exciting or interesting thing to make a floor in a house out of? Okay. It says thing A, a floor. So I think it's a singular. It says thing A, thing to make a floor house. in a house out of. Okay. Most. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right. You know what I mean. There's wor- there's words on there. Yeah. yeah. Um. 
No, but like, yeah, so in theory, you could have that one room, the one room that you're making a floor on, like, I don't know, let's say you do like toffee or something, and you're just like, okay, nobody walks in this room. Or even if it's the whole house, like, you sacrifice having like sticky bottoms of your shoes for that one room that you can eat all the toffee in. <laughs> <laughs> or you could pick something that tastes good that's not sticky. Yeah. Um, that's just the first thing I thought of because I like toffee. Are, so. are you going taste for taste? Um, I feel like... I said that, and then I got excited about eating the floor in a room, and so I think I it's a good it. conversation starter. You walk up to someone, you're like, "Hey, I can eat. I ate the floor in my house for dinner." <laughs> and they're like, "But even if you don't walk on it, dust still collects." Mm, that's Especially true. Especially if it's something sticky like toffee, like you're not getting the dust off. That's true. Yeah, you could saran wrap it or something, but that's <laughs> that's a lot. Of, never mind. That's a lot of saran wrap. That sounds awful. I'm how not going. Is, to how big is the toffee floor room? The eating the top floor toffee floor room. Seven. Seven. Okay. Um, that's that's pretty pretty, I, pretty reasonably sized. I guess I was picturing like like a living room. Mm -hmm. It was like I don't know when I think of like a room in a house. Like I feel like a living room is like the stereotypical like room in a house that you think of. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, if you have open concept uh, floor plan, it's just like everything is connected. So then right. you just get more toffee, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Have you guys seen the Mr. Beast video? Not sponsored by Mr. Beast. <laughs> where you have to say that anytime we yeah. mention anything ever. Oh, yeah, not, spon great <laughs> not sponsored by mentioning things. <laughs> this is a great couch we're sitting on. Not sponsored by this couch. <laughs> not sponsored by toffee either, just for the record. I just breathe. All right. Air. I'm not sorry. Not sponsored by air. Um, <laughs> Carry on. So they, they have camera. this video <laughs> where he goes in his friend's backyard and dumps like a billion of like the little squishy Orbeez yeah. things. Orbeez. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have seen this. Yes. Before. So my initial thought was that would like that would feel nice. Florbees. Yeah. Florbees. <laughs> Florbees. <laughs> um, but also this one restaurant that we, my family went to a lot when I was growing up. They had TVs in their floors that were what? just. It was like a TV, and then. I understand that you can't see my hands, but I'm doing hand motions. <laughs> um, there are like TVs under the floor and then like a piece of, I don't know, plexiglass or something over them. So, that yeah. so like just it was, on TVs. yes, okay. you're not just stepping on TVs, but like you can look through the clear glass and see a TV. Mm. And I was like, it'd be kind of cool if my floor was all made of TVs. With the plexiglass. Yes, with the plexiglass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. I, I, th I feel like the first thing I thought of was like, I feel like I wonder if a lot of people will think this, and I was surprised that not one of you said it, but like like trampolines or something like mm. like you can bounce everywhere yeah. in your house, yeah, if the floor like I feel like that's like one route to go with it, so we've we've tackled three different like approaches, like mm. three different paradigms, like like three different schools of thought, like you have um you have the edible mm -hmm. one, the fun, and the I don't know like practical or like. It's I don't know. Floor bees aren't TV, very practical. Well, TVs in the floor, super practical. Yeah. I guess that's f fun. Yeah, that is fun. That is. Now, I've, I it's think a we different kind of fun. Honestly, I think we when we started this, we went everywhere except practical. I think that's the one thing we haven't talked about. Well, cement. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that doesn't qualify as interesting unless you're like I don't know. Or, you're really into yeah, cement. Like studying cement. A, a cementologist. So I want to talk about. <laughs> trampolines for a second and i have a personal vendetta um like as you just had surgery i had acl surgery like seven <laughs> weeks ago and i just have bad knees in general so i know did a trampoline my, hurt you no hurt but knee? jumping did oh okay yeah so if i had like if my floor was made of trampolines i i'd have to jump right, right? like you're yeah. not just gonna walk on a trampoline no, and mm. i would hurt myself constantly mm. so mm. I, I like the idea in theory, but personally, I am against the trampoline floor. Okay. That's fair. Well, I, are there any other ways? Sorry, I didn't interrupt you. You're good. I was just, so I like the Orbeez idea. It made me think of like, like, f like a foam pit or something. Mm. Like, I feel like that could be fun. But then I thought about like, if you're, if the floor itself is like Orbeez or a foam pit, like something small that there's a lot of, mm. like, is wouldn't they just fall through or like you'd have to have something underneath something underneath them. you have yeah. to hold it it's also gonna be hard to clean like if that's in your house forever but how do how do like trampoline parks do it do they like take all the foam out wash the foam 
and then put it back in the. <laughs> I've never thought. Oh, I've never thought no, about that's that gross. Do they never, never clean it? Did I to. think I would be pondering how trampoline parks clean their foam? But here we are. They have to. They have to clean it, right? Or do they get new foam every once in a while? That'd be so expensive. I don't think. Not, there's no way. There's no, no way they take it all out and clean it. We could ask. If you, if you know anyone that works at a trampoline if your park, your job is floor. No, wait, foam wipe, <laughs> wipe guy. guy at a trampoline park. Send us a DM at j dot k dot s at gmail dot yahoo dot com. Disclaimer: May or may not be a real email. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of different ways you can think about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first like thought about this uh, this hypothetical, because I, I was the one who actually put this one in, I was mm-hmm. like, I, I didn't know that there were this many intricacies to it. So mm-hmm. I was hoping, I was like, JJ and Dylan, they got to have different ideas than mm-hmm. I have, because I, I felt like I was hitting a creative wall with this one. Mm-hmm. And creative we're floor, out here, if you cre- will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, or a creative wall that I jumped into with a trampoline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now we're out here pondering like, who cleans the foam in <laughs> in trampoline parks? Like. All right, let's take take the logistics out of it. Like we're not worrying about the dot. Like s- like immediate thoughts. Can, like you're not worrying you, about. Don't worry about the cleaning. Take the logistics out of it. Let's like, ta- let's say whatever you do, it'll clean. It. Like it'll be clean. Self cleaning. Self cleaning floor. Right. Self cleaning <laughs> toffee. I feel like cleaning toffee. I feel like the fact that we have to clean it is taking away from the excitement of having whatever floor you want. Because any weird floor we have. The cleaning is going to be hard. That's true. Probably. Yeah, that's a good point. So, not if it's TVs with plexiglass on top. Hmm. You just get a Swiffer on that bad boy. So what's the not point? Like, a <laughs> if I want to watch, like, if I want to watch TV though, I feel like I'm usually sitting, like, I'm not standing down, looking straight, standing up, looking straight down. Put it in your kitchen when you're cooking. Like on the counter? No, on the floor. You okay. just stand there. and Look straight down. Okay. Yeah. You could, like, if you could do a tutorial of how to make the meal mm-hmm. on the TV. So you look down. Practical. You, yeah, you oh, see. Oh, that is practical. Yeah. Is. And honestly, you could do that with, like, I don't know, a workout video mm-hmm. or, like, anything. Like, how to yeah. build, like. Spruce a, Lake Wilderness Camp YouTube videos. You yeah. know, why not? This yeah. podcast. What? <laughs> <laughs> That'd could, be weird. <laughs> I just imagine. We could be all over your floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird to, for me to think about. <laughs> or, or yeah, well, or I'm out of directions to go, so I'm <laughs> just or listening. The gr- the floor is made out of grass that asks you math questions. Throw back to two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> this will be confusing if you haven't seen episode one. Um, if you haven't listened to episode one, go listen now. <laughs> Finish listening to this one and then listen. <laughs> I like you could do that. Like I might take out the math problems because I real we that's not I don't think that'd be positive unless I like have a young child which I don't who like needs to learn math and mm. I can like use my floor to educate my child. <laughs> um, but outside of that, like grasp on its own would might be cool, but like grass with no dirt that cleans itself. Uh, so I guess I'm being picky. I, I mean, yeah, I, I personally get really itchy. Like when I touch grass and things like that, there's yeah. like a mm-hmm. number of people mm-hmm. in the world that experience the same thing. So, okay. So combining Dylan's idea with another idea. So it's like sometimes when you're reading a book, but like maybe you want to lay down, like it's kind of a pain to like hold the book up above your head. And then sometimes you drop it and it hits you in the face. Just me. Okay. never mind. But I have to um, my phone a lot. That's true. Yeah, I think phones are a culprit for that too. But what if you do the plexiglass thing, but underneath that you have like a book, but it's op- you have a bunch of copies of the book open to each page. <laughs> so you could like, you're like, I'm ready for the next page. I'm going to just roll over <laughs> to the next spot on the floor. So you lay like on your stomach on the floor and your face is just like and pressed you're, against the floor. Right. Like, the plexiglass. And then you can read the book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't really, I'm not a big reader, so... Don't know. I'm gonna stick with work. TVs. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think I. Sorry, Go I don't ahead. have anything interesting to say. I'm just saying I am. I'm locked in. I think to the TV idea. No. Yeah. No. Oh. No. Mm-mm. What are you locked into? Floorbies. Oh, because it has a cool name and it would feel cool. And they're self cleaning now. Yeah. If that they're was... self cleaning now. If they're not self cleaning. I'm going TV. If they're self cleaning, going floor bees. Mm. Is it like several layers of floor bees? Like oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. If it's if it's a thick layer of floor bees, I would go with the floor bees. Maybe as as long as you can't like drown in them. Not too thick, but like maybe like 
come up to like half of your foot. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's enough. Enough that like like if I wanted if I was laying down, I want to like get some else. I could just roll myself on the floor, bees. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm down. Well, what about like, like you could lay one? on your back and your head would be above. I was gonna say water, but above the floor, bees. <laughs> floor <laughs> level. Um, I mean, we haven't talked about probably someone else there has talked about like. Like mattresses or like pillows or something like that. Mm. Like the comfort yeah. level, you could nap anywhere. Yeah. It would kind of be like the trampolines because you can bounce on some mattresses unless it's like memory foam and then yeah. you just sink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but so I don't know. Th- thoughts on that? Like you, you guys didn't seem too convinced yeah. or excited about it. But I have a bed. <laughs> yeah, but you could have an entire floor <laughs> entire of bed. Floor of bed. <laughs> I don't know. Me as a or kid. An entire bed of floor. Depending on how you look at it. Sorry. Like, I don't think I ever rolled out of bed as a kid, but I definitely, like, moved. Like, I'm not a stable... You moved s- as a kid? I, <laughs> I'm not a stable <laughs> sleeper, as they say. Um, so, I don't know if that would be helpful to have to maybe have a whole floor of that. But also, I guess it'd be easy to have a bunch of people over and, like, you have places for them to sleep. So, like, you got a That's whole true. floor of beds and mattresses. Mm. But I also feel like... You need more blankets, then. Oh, uh, Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I can't buy more blankets. So you have the... That's a lot. I can't yeah. do that. Uh, I got to... Whatever I get from my floor has to be independently useful, I feel like. Also, like, comfort... Useful, but interesting? Mm, not. I don't think it's as interesting. Mm. Even if it is practical. Yeah. Well, I mean, the question says interesting or exciting. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't think pillows are exciting. Like... If I'm tired, yes, they can be exciting. That's but true. Like, Unless you're a, a sleep or a pillow pillowologist. Yeah. I think <laughs> Orbeez will always be exciting. Or floor be- Sorry, floor bees will also Thank be exciting. You. My bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, Dylan. Well, it, would you get used to it eventually and then you would no longer be excited I mean, by it? And then any it of these things. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have that issue with anything, though. And then it's no longer exciting, so you can't have your floor made out of it anymore. It just disappears. Then you have no floor in that room. Yeah, that's a whole nother wormhole <laughs> that I think that we don't need to die. We don't into. need to worry about that one yet. Maybe it'll come up again next week. If no. you get bored with your floor, does it go away? In this essay, I will. Just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yeah. Not um, sponsored by TED Talks. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna commit to the floor bees. That's gonna be my vote. I'm yeah, I'm floor bees. I like floor bees. I like part of me is gonna like I'm gonna lie awake tonight thinking of like <laughs> something else that could be more exciting than floor bees. And then I'll inevitably propose it to you guys, and then we'll be like, "Oh, we should have mentioned that on the podcast." Mm. But floor bees is is a great option. I think I'm I'm gonna go for it as well. Inevitably, we can't come up with all the arguments. So if you have a better argument for something else, feel free to reach out and tell us why we are wrong. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I think we've uh, we've. We've made some good progress on this on this yeah. hypothetical. Uh, I think so. Brass tax, if you will. <laughs> yeah, we we really brass taxed it out in here. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's about all we have for the hypothetical, and yeah. that's about all we have for this podcast. And we wanted to, uh, if you're if you're if you're still listening, <laughs> what, what's what's the move? If you're still listening, then we want you to. Text, message, email Johnny <laughs> a picture of Nicolas Cage <laughs> and what you would want a floor to be made out of. Yes. There you go. <laughs> That's the move. So do that if you're st- if you stayed with Johnny Tice. Time. Also, thanks for listening this long. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we, we got a lot of uh, people very nicely reaching out to mm-hmm. uh, a few of us uh, talking about um, that they've enjoyed it so far and giving us feedback and stuff like that. So that's been really helpful. Um, so keep that up. Uh, tell us what you want the floor in your house to be made out of. <laughs> um, I forgot to mention this earlier when we were talking about Ignite, but thank you to everyone who texted me <laughs> when you guys said last week that they should text me and congratulate me on on leading worship at Ignite. Uh, I, I didn't think anyone was going to actually do that, but then I got some very kind texts from you guys. Yeah, snaps really for our viewers. Yeah. 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 Listeners. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Same viewer, thing. Viewer, you view it with your ears. Like, yeah. understandable. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, just to give you guys an idea of what we're going to do 
in the future. So next time we talked about our boss Johnny. Yeah. And he has agreed to be the guest star on the next episode, episode three Woo! of Everybody Sit. And we could not be more excited. And he, I'm sure, will want to tell his side of the story of him laughing at an inappropriate time during the uh <laughs> <You're>? <laughs> during, during 3CA. So uh look forward to that. Uh we're gonna probably throw down a little interview, uh get him to talk about what he does and uh I don't know. Well, he, he's 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 probably going to be really into the hypothetical as well. He mm-hmm. he loves that segment, and so we're gonna um, we're gonna get that going. It's it's gonna be a good time, um, and that'll be that'll be two weeks from when this goes out. So look forward to it. I could not be more excited. I've been having a ton of fun doing this. Absolutely, so. for sure. Yeah. So hope you guys have enjoyed listening to it. Um, any any closing remarks from you guys? Thanks for listening. I'm Dylan. I'm JJ. (laughs) I'm Jeffrey. Thanks for listening to Everybody's It, where we still need to work on the outro. (laughs) (laughs) See you guys. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Later.